home run at Ford Field, which won the 1960 World Series over the New York Yankees. And that's appropriate. Mazeroski with a home run to win it in 60, and the Pirates need a few miracles beginning today. Jim Rooker, today's Pirate pitcher. Howard talked to Jim earlier. Jim, what a spot they've got you in. It's the last stand, and you've got to save. Well, that's true. Uh, seems like there are a lot of Indians around and no help in sight, but uh, there aren't too many people maybe that can be put in this position, but I, I welcome the challenge, and I'm real happy about it. Uh, it's just a matter of going out and doing my job and hoping things turn out right. You seem to be throwing better than you have in a long time if your performance in the first game is any yardstick. Is that true? I believe so. I've, I've gone through a lot of in, uh, injuries this year and been on the disabled list a couple of times. And uh, I think I'm probably more, uh, or at least at this point, a lot healthier now than I was during the course of the season. So I think that with the fact that I haven't had to pitch that much this year probably uh, has allowed me to be a little bit stronger at this time of the year as opposed to somebody that's maybe pitched a lot of games, a lot of innings, and uh, maybe not be quite as strong. What's your best pitch, Jim? Well, I'm basically a control pitcher. I'm not going to overpower anybody and uh, strike out a lot of hitters. So I've got to just uh, get all of my pitches over the plate, stay around the plate, and basically really stay on top of the hitters. I can't afford to get behind on these uh, Oriole hitters like the rest of our staff really has been doing as of late. Jim Rucker, who worked in relief in Game 1 in Baltimore. The start in Game 5, the Pirates out on the field. Defensively today, it's Bill Robinson getting the start in left field, again because of the left-hander going for Baltimore, Flanagan. Omar Marino is in center. He hasn't stolen the base in the series. Neither have the Pirates. And Dave Parker over in right. Parker 7 for 17. At third base, Bill Madlock made a key error yesterday and also turned in a fine play at third. And off and on series thus far for Madlock with Tim Foley at shortstop with three hits in game number four. Talk about off and on series. There's a key example. Phil Garner at second base. Problems defensively, but Garner with seven hits and 14 trips to the plate. And, of course, at first, the captain of the Bucks. Number eight is number one in Pittsburgh, Willie Stargell. Back of the plate, Steve Nikosha again in the platoon arrangement with Ott cashing against the right-handers and Nikosha in the lineup against the lefties. And 37-year-old Jim Rooker on the mound. Rooker is 37. He has an 18-year-old son, David, who is a freshman at the University of Arizona and figures to be the Wildcats starting third baseman. Rooker, a surprising starter. Everybody figuring that Chuck Tanner would opt for Bruce Keeson, who was the starter in game number one. The Orioles going with basically the same lineup they went with the other night against the lefty Candelaria. The only change would be in the middle where they have flip-flopped to Sensei and Renneke. But the same cast of characters that provided the impetus initially in the 8-4 win in game number three. And here was the man who was the big hero in game number three with four runs batted in. Had two more RBIs yesterday. Kiko Garcia. Garcia, Ayala, and Singleton. To start it off in game number five. Garcia celebrating his 26th birthday today. It's a family affair. His dad, Alphonse, is 54. His Uncle Louie is 52 today. Here we go. Game five. Oh, and one to the umpires, an American League umpire at the plate today. Jim McKean, Paul Rungi of the National League at first. Jerry Newdecker, American second. Bob Engel, National at third. Russ Getz, American left field line. Terry Tate, a national. Down the line and right. Oh, and to the count. Well, you had to be impressed with Jim Rooker on the opening night of the series. When he came on, he worked three and two-thirds innings, allowed just two hits, and he threw well. He was well in command. He had a good curveball, and he had a good fastball. He can be a little sneaky fast. Jim, he's got a nice, easy motion. That fastball can get on you a little bit. Fouled away. I liked what Rucker said because he was admitting the differences between the two staffs in that interview he did with me. I've got to keep the ball around the plate. I can't give anything away. Let them walk. It's told in the statistics of the series, maybe the most telling statistic, 
I'll continue right after Rooker makes this pitch. All right, I'll continue now. Nineteen birds have walked. Only eight bucks have walked, Don. Well, you can't afford to be giving up all those free passes, especially in a World Series. You know, the big thing, uh, walks are going to be part of the game, but if you can minimize your walks and you might maybe have an average of two a game, that is, that's a good game for anybody. Now, whether that's one pitcher or your whole staff, if you start getting up into the five and sixes and you're in trouble. Two and two the count on Garcia. Rooker used to be a very deliberate worker. He was pitching well early this season and thought one of the reasons was he had speeded up the tempo. Hit in the air, down the right field line, and curling and going foul. Back out of play. So the count stays 2-2 two and two on Garcia. There's a guy out there that just picked up that ball, Dave Parker. He is playing, and he is not 100%. He has got the bad knee. He went into the fence yesterday to, to grab a fly ball. He's got a bad shoulder, but I'll tell you, he's still going strong. He's still a threat. The Bucks, though, as I said before, they have not put it all together in this series, and even to a man, they have come out and said that. This is not our ball club. People have not seen our ball club yet. Foul back, two and two. Well, you made an effective point in your opening when you talked about the Bucks' failure with men on bases. Look, thus far in this series, the Bucks are hitting for a 329 average. The Birds for only 266. However, with men on bases in scoring position, thank you very much. Uh, the Birds are hitting 289. The Bucks only 243. Another telling statistic. Broken bat, looper, and Rooker makes the catch, a basket catch. Last time we saw that was 54 with Mays off Wurtz. <laughs> Over the shoulder. Now there's a play. If Rooker doesn't make that play, I don't believe they get Garcia. But I said before, Jim started off in his professional career as we look at it again, and good instincts right here. He was a former outfielder in the Tiger organization, and he makes the play, and he makes it look easy, but a very good heads-up play by Rooker. Here is Benny Ayala making his second start in the series. Two for two against Candelaria the other night, a single, and then a home run. In the meantime, did you hear Earl Weaver tell me in the pregame show? Ball ball. That he left started up. He talked about how little was left on his bench. He left started up to it yesterday. He said, Ayala might as well leave the pitcher up against the right hander. <laughs> Good uh, well, there's a man right there that he's got the whole baseball world confused. I'll guarantee you that. <laughs> Two and one to count on Ayala. I have never seen more baseball people shaking their head and trying to figure out Earl Weaver than I did yesterday after the game when we went over to the ABC hospitality place. Bouncer to short. Tim Foley. Two down. Now, you know, one thing about the Orioles, Weaver contending that he uses everybody, and certainly he has proven that. He's proven that in the first four games. Every Oriole has gotten into the first four games of the series, and interestingly, all but one of the Pirates, only Dave Roberts, has not worked for Pittsburgh. Well, both of these managers, why, they're firm believers. They will platoon, both of them, as we see this afternoon, and they go to their bench a lot. They, they take advantage of all 25 men. Ken Singleton looks at the strike. 90 miles an hour, the last pitch from Rucker. That's not bad for a man yeah. that's been on the disabled list twice this year. There's a change, missing outside. Kenny 7 for 17, hitting 4-12 in the series, but he's not that happy with the series he's having because of three important strikeouts. One and two the count. It's only knocked in two runs in the series, Don. Well, Ken had an interesting statement you told me about this morning when they were talking about the managerial moves of Earl Weaver. Fly ball to center field. Omar Moreno will handle this one. And an auspicious beginning for Pittsburgh as Ripper sets the Orioles down in order after a half. In game five, it's ball or nothing. And the Pirates coming up. 
Mike Flanagan, the winner in game number one. 23 game winner during the regular season. On the mound for the Orioles today. And he chatted with Howard before the game. Well, second time around for Mike Flanagan. Tell us what makes him tick. Your evaluation of him. What he throws. Well, he has outstanding stuff, Howard. He's got a good fastball. He has a tremendous slider. He tries to throw low and in. He's got an excellent curveball. Booted the best breaking ball in the American League uh, before Gidry come up with his slider. And he found a changeup in the middle of the season from Scotty McGregor. Along with this outstanding stuff, he has an intelligent mind and uh, as far as p pitching the hitters and the perfect temperament. Nothing seems to bother him. So you've got a pitcher that's going to be great. Weaver's comments about Fl Howard did chat with Flanagan too before the game. Those were the comments of Weaver. As we go to the bottom of the first inning with no score, a look at the Pirate lineup. And Omar Marino to stand in. Marino and Parker, the left-handers in the lineup against the lefty Flanagan. First pitcher strike. Don, you started to make the point about Singleton and Weaver in the bottom top well, of the first. How well, was commenting on that? Kenny said, in response to all the talk about Earl and his magic, beauty, beauty. Took something off that, as you saw. Kenny said, sure, Earl makes the moves, but we're the guys who execute. We're the ones who deserve the credit. Well, that's exactly what Weaver said in the pregame show interview, Al. One and two the count. Yeah, but, you know, Earl might be a little self-effacing, I think. <laughs> he deserves a lot. Of, look at the defense for the Orioles with Bumbrey out of the lineup. So Renicki gets the start in center field. Viola in left. Singleton in right. Dower getting the start today at second base. As Marino goes down swinging. One away. Now four runs with chalked up as you look at this again. Don. It's just a good, hard Tim breaking Culley. pitch right here. Moreno just outmatched with this pitch. Good location. Weaver stayed with Flanagan, for which Weaver, an example of what you were talking about, Weaver and Weaver alone deserves the credit in the first game of the series. But he pointed out, and rightly so, Flanagan only gave up two earned runs. A strike. Exactly. And there were so many situations in that game where you thought toward the end he would come out. It was 5 nothing at one point, and of course it wound up 5-4 with the tying run stranded at third. One and one. Well, you look at Earl during the series, Howard. He's a hero in game one, a goat in game two in a sense. Yeah, when he didn't bunt Lowenstein. No. Right. And he's been the hero ever since. You bet. 1-1 one, one pitch. The strike and the count 1-2. and two. Flanagan with the 91 mile an hour fastball. One two pitch to Tim Foley. Checks in time. Pitch missing inside. Two and two. That's a pitch right there that Flanagan can get right handers out on. He's got a good hard fighting curveball that he can bring it right down into the knees and just below the knees. He's got a good downward break to it. Two two pitch is hit foul outside first. You do an interview with Earl, you've got to piece apart every word because he knows what he's saying in the context and perspective of the whole lead. Hit the center field. Renicky coming on and makes the catch. He hesitated at first. Well, left field is his normal position and best. But recently, he's been playing in center, and he is on balance a good defensive outfield. Notice when Earl was talking about Flanagan. To amplify what I was talking about, Don, he said Mike had voted the best curveball in the league until Gidry came up with that slider. So you know he's always thinking about the whole league. Well, he's got it pretty well in perspective. He won more games than anybody in baseball, 102. Dave Parker takes a high ball one. Parker with four hits in game number one off Flanagan. Foul away. It's interesting that both number three hitters, Parker and Singleton, coming into the game, exactly the same stats. As we remind you tonight, it's the Rams against Dallas in a big one. Special Sunday edition. 
And then tomorrow, the regular Monday night edition, Monday Night Football. First time ever from New York as the Minnesota Vikings take on the Jets. Both games at 9 o'clock Eastern, tonight and tomorrow. Well, as I've said, the Rams and the Cowboys, as good a matchup as you can get in the National Football Conference. The Rams beginning to put things together, always with a great defense. Hobbled somewhat tonight by the absence of offensive lineman John Williams and their two wide receivers. We'll be giving you today's NFL scores very soon. One ball, one strike on Parker with two out and the base is empty in the first inning. Popped up in foul ground. The sensei coming over. But might have a play and just runs out of room in the second row. I asked Dave what he was going to do to improve on the four hits. He got off Flanagan the first time around. He said get four more, two of them three-run homers. He and Singleton, the same stats, each with seven hits and 17 trips to the plate coming in. Neither has homered in the series and each with two runs batted in. I think what you said about Singleton, Howard, can be applied to Parker. He's hit well, but he really hasn't been that instrumental offensively. More particularly about Willie Stargell. That's right, Stargell, 7 for 18. There have been five key situations where Stargell has failed with men on base in this series. Willie's well aware of them. And down goes Parker. So Flanagan strikes out two in the inning. Each side out in order. We go to the second. Baltimore nothing. Pittsburgh nothing. That's a magnificent sight. A helicopter shot of downtown Pittsburgh. You see the stadium on the left and the downtown area known as the Golden Triangle at the confluence of the Ohio, the Allegheny, and the Monongahela Rivers. Well, that's the city I was talking about. Every Everybody in the municipal government can take pride in what they've done with the inner city of this town. And the same is absolutely true of all of them. Great cities have made this country great, and they're not going to perish. In the second inning with no score, Eddie Murray, Gary Renicky, and Doug DeSensei. Eddie Murray, switch hitter. One and oh the count. Murray got off to a hot start in the series, but they have cooled him off. Four for 14. Two and oh. Don't let that fool you, Al. This man is a hitter. An exceptional hit. He can kill you any time. In only his third year, you've got to be impressed by Murray as he gets a fly ball to right field. Dave Parker is right there. One gone. So Jim Rucker has set down the first four. Rucker didn't find out until after yesterday's game that he would be starting in game number five. Yeah, it really wasn't until... Uh, Somebody came up to him in the clubhouse and asked him. He didn't hear it from Tanner. He came up. He was being interviewed, and I was watching it on TV as we went back to that. Went back to the room, and and there he was. He said he looked at him, and uh, all of a sudden his eyes got as big as saucers. He said, "No." He said, "No one told me." He said, "You're the first one that told me." Interesting how pitchers prepare for games. Rucker, very easygoing sort, out by the batting cage, chatting with everybody. Outwardly, anyway, seemingly no pressure. Other pitchers just like to stay back in the clubhouse and avoid conversations. Popped up. Stargell is there. And Wilbur puts it away. Two down. Doug DeSensei coming up. DeSensei hit a home run off Bruce Kaysen in the first inning of game one. And since... At that time, he has gone 0 for 12. Yes, but he has three ribbies, and he walked four times yesterday. Only a limited number of players have done that in the whole history of the World Series. The Giants, red hot, crushed San Francisco. New Orleans over Tampa Bay, a big win, and Washington winning again. Miami beat Buffalo. Big game. Look at Cincinnati's upset of the mighty Pittsburgh Steelers and St. Louis upset the Philadelphia Eagles. 
Pedro Zell wanted parity in the National Football League. He's got it. 1-1 pitch to the sensei. Got the inside corner for a strike. 1-2. and two. Toss and fairness to the Steelers. They played that game without Lynn Swan. All of their linebackers are out. They more resemble a hospital team than they do the Pittsburgh Steelers. The 1-2 pitch. Got him swinging. So Jim Rooker, the surprise starter in game number five, has set down the first six. And in the middle of the second inning, in game five, Orioles nothing, Pirates nothing. Phil Robinson will lead off with the Bucks in the bottom of the second. Willie Stargell is out on deck. And before the game, Howard talked to Stargell about the atmosphere surrounding the Pirates. Willie, honestly, what's the mood of this ball club? Is there any quit in it now? No, Howard. We feel that we have not really played the caliber of baseball that the Pittsburgh Pirates are capable of playing. We are anxious to prove, not necessarily to ourselves, because we know of our capabilities. I think, if anything, maybe the guys are in a situation where this is the first World Series, and they want to do things to show them basically what we've been doing all year. Robinson leads off by grounding one to the sensei, and Murray is able to scoop it out. One away. Well, he's Stargell coming up. You know, in light of what Stargell said, I'm just wondering if you don't think, Don and Howard, that maybe some of the Pirates might have underestimated Baltimore coming in. Well, I think there's a strong possibility of that. As you look at Robinson hit the ball again to DeSense, dug a clean throw, but then just throws it a little low on Eddie Murray right there. I don't agree with either of you. How can you underrate the winningest team in baseball with the best pitching staff in baseball? I think that they thought their power, I thought they thought man for man offensively that they were better than Baltimore. Stargell hits a fly ball to center field. And Renicky in his tracks. I still don't agree with you, as Kenny Singleton pointed out. The Birds had more than 180 home runs. I don't, I'm, we're talking about Pittsburgh stocks. I think that Pittsburgh thought that they really had a better, and why not? You should think you have a better club. If you think you don't have a better club, why well, you shouldn't even be here. That I agree with. And I just don't believe they underrated the Birds. Well, I think they had to fight too hard to beat off Montreal, a young team. Well, that's very true. And But they had good pitching like Baltimore. I think they realized they did have good pitching. Grounded to the sense, he takes a wicked hop, but he recovers. His throw, though, won't be in time as Bill Madlock is aboard safely at first base. I don't know what they're going to call this. Look at it again, but based on the hop, I think you... Look at that. Ball went up over the glove against the chest. We still haven't received the official call. Elliot, I think it hit on the back part of that dirt, right at the right edge. There. See, it you comes see it? up yeah. right on the seam, right there, and it comes up, and Doug plays it off the I think they got to give him a hit. Well, we'll wait for the score to hit, and they do give him a hit. Bad hop single from Madlock. That's Bill sixth hit in the series, and the game's first base runner. And Flanagan does a good job keeping runners close. With Nikosha waiting at the plate. Hit to left field. Ayala going back. It's deep but playable on the warning track for Benny. So the side is retired in the second inning. One hit. One man left on. On to the third inning with the score. The Orioles nothing. And the Pirates nothing. Rich Dower to lead off in the third inning. And misses Rich Dower. Watching. If this series goes any long, I'm going to sit down with the wives. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen some lovely wives on both yep. sides. <laughs> sit down right there next to Mrs. Marino and the whistle, huh? <laughs> Dower, Dempsey, Flanagan, bottom of the order against Jim Rooker, who has started by retiring the first six Orioles. No score in the third. 1-0. He's wondering if he'll get to pitch again. He told me he hasn't felt so well all year, maybe in a couple on, of years. Dallas. He really pitched the best game of the Baltimore pitches and came out without a win. Well, if they do go back to Baltimore and Pittsburgh does win today, he will be in there on Tuesday night against Blylevin. 
Two balls, no strikes, the count on Dower. Two and one. I tell you, I like the way Rucker is throwing. So far, he's been throwing super. Fastball has been very good, moving a lot. And yet he can junk you and keep you off stride. Popped up. Right side. Rucker calling for Stargell to take it. And what he does. So seven in a row. Johnny Lowenstein. The glasses. The philosopher. The man who got such a big hit yesterday. Just beyond him, of course, Kenny Singer. One thing about Lowenstein, after winning game one in the playoffs and what he's done thus far, everybody around the country knows how to pronounce his name now. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Even from time to time, Weaver lapses into Lowenstein. Rick Dempsey, 3 for 12 in the series. Sounds like uh, the writer of a symphony. <laughs> oh, and one. Rooker has really a nice, smooth, easy delivery. One and one. Mentioned he was a very deliberate pitcher and seems to have picked up the pace, and that seems to be the case today, Don. He's working. He's working well. He's not slow whatsoever. Taking a little time right now, but outside of that, he worked very well. Bouncer to third. He's a player for Bill Madlock. Two down. And just take a look and try and digest a little bit, if you will, this easy motion by Rooker. Now the head comes Number back 46. up to pick up the target, and everything's Mike nice Flanagan. and smooth and easy. Well, here in Pittsburgh, some scattered clouds today, but no threat of rain. As Flanagan hits it in the air to Marino. And Jim Rooker has pitched three perfect innings. Orioles down again, one, two, three in the third. We go to the bottom of the third, still no score. Bottom of the third inning, Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, Game 5 of the 1979 World Series. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, Don Drysdale with you, and Game 6, if there is a Game 6, to be played on Tuesday night in Baltimore. Seventh game is necessary on Wednesday night. No score. The only hit in the game belongs to the Pirates. Bill Madlock, a base hit in the second. As Garner leads off, Rooker and Marino will follow. Garner trying to bunt his way on. But Flanagan is right there. Low throw, but Murray able to make the grab for the out. One down. And even Matlock's hit was a tarnished one. The ball hitting the skin of the dirt, as Don pointed out on the replay, causing an errant bounce high against the sensei's chest. So... This is a totally different kind of ball game. Usually, with 36 minutes of the game gone, we're still in the first half of the first <laughs> inning. Haven't we? Oh, the first four games, 3 hours 18, 3 13. Then we had a quickie on Friday night, 2.51, but a 1 hour 7 minute rain delay. And yesterday's game was the longest 9 inning game in World Series history, 3.48. Jim Rooker fouls it back. Obviously, this guy can hit for a pitcher. Well, I mentioned before, he started off, he signed as an outfielder in the Tiger organization, so don't just count him out. One ball and one strike. Again, a reminder, tonight, special Sunday edition of Monday Night Football, Los Angeles against Dallas. The Cowboys... Now getting ready to roll. They usually start slowly. They didn't this year, although they were upset by Cleveland on a Monday night. They're putting it all together, their team is getting healthy, and they've acquired John Dutton. Rooker pops a foul. That one will drift back out of play, and the count is two and two. Omar Marino on deck. You know, you talked about the paucity of walks and all of the hits, and yet... The Bucks are down three games to one. Also, they've not stolen a base in this series. Mm -hmm. Ball, strike three. 
Now, wasn't that a beautiful pitch, Don? Great pitch, great location. Rooker looking for something out over the plate, and he just came back and nipped that inside corner. Flanagan can do this so well, so can McGregor. Right there. Here's a guy that's really been neutralized in this series. That's right. We talked about all the men Parker and Stargell have left on base, and it's been the same thing with Marino. Did you hear a whistle? <laughs> I heard a whistle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a no. <laughs> I love to whistle. <laughs> what a no on the count. Yeah, we've had some characters. This is Marino with a whistle. Jeff Forty is still looking for the guy with a cigar today. <laughs> <laughs> The classic shot yesterday. Oh. <laughs> one one pitch. Popped in the air, shallow left field. Garcia says he'll take it and oh, oh, barely oh. does. Good play by Kiko in foul ground. So very quickly we've been to three innings. No score in the ball game as you look at Kiko again. Kiko wondering about Ayala. Finally, look at that white still showing. So at the end of three quick innings in Pittsburgh, still Orioles nothing, Pirates nothing in game five. Looking down into Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. A beautiful ballpark that opened in the middle of the 1970 season. Second time the World Series has been played here. Do it for 21, of course. The late... Roberto Clemente, the Pirates right fielder, Manny Sandian, mentioning it after the Bucks won game two. That one was for Roberto. Sandian's base hit in the ninth inning, the key blow. Kiko Garcia popped out in the first inning. Rooker made a nice play to get him, and it's fouled back. 0-1. You know, knowing Kiko with his chronic back problem, he has a pinched nerve in the back once a month. He goes to the chiropractor who pops his back back into place. You wonder how the kid has been able to do so many things. Well, you know, he's had a pretty good year for Baltimore when you look all the way through it because since the All-Star break, he's been doing a lot of playing for him. Didn't play the first two games and then really came on. Bounce to short. Goldie gets him. And ten in a row. Set down by Jim Rooker. So far, and it's oh so young, a perfect game for Jim Ruck, still throwing easy. Now going against this Birds lineup second time around. So a good time to take a searching look at it. See if they're detecting anything, can begin to get to him. Well, he hasn't really thrown that many pitches. Both Rooker and Flanagan threw three innings of play. Rooker threw 33 pitches. He's pitched thrown through, I guess, right now to Garcia to make that 35. Flanagan's gone through 28, so they're going... Just about hit and hit. Benny Ayala grounded out in the first inning. 1-0. Oh, they don't get the appeal. <laughs> 2 another count. This is Ayala. Great on the count. So Rucker behind for the first time. One thing he says he must avoid doing. Three and one. <laughs> and he loses him. So the Orioles have their first base runner. And Rooker will be working out of the stretch for the first time as Ken Singleton comes up. Glide out in the first right inning. Number. It'll be interesting right now to watch how Jim pitches out of the stretch position. Of course, he's done it many times in his life, but a lot of times when you get rolling along, rolling along, and working out of the windup for so many times, as we said before, he's retired 10 in a row. Now he walks Ayala sometimes. It maybe will take just a pitch or two to get himself in the groove pitching out of the stretch and we'll have to wait and see about that well we have just lost any possibility of a repeat of Don Larson in 56 <laughs> pop foul back out of play 
There's Kenny's wife. You've seen it twice before as Jet 40 covers his human coverage of this World Series. His dimensional coverage, I might add. Strike one pitch. Did he check? They appeal. He did check. One and one. <laughs> well, a lot of fans doing some umpiring with their hearts out here, but yep. I believe Kenny checked in time. Jim McKeon. Well, well, I'm not real sure. He's out there. That bat is laying back there now. A lot of times when things go along like this, both of these managers, they'll just start something, make something happen. One one pitch is found with the plate and the count one and two. On deck, Eddie Murray. One ball, two strikes. Now Rooker, who was in great rhythm, as you look at the schedule, if necessary, game six. Tuesday from Baltimore, 8 o'clock. If necessary, Game 7, Wednesday from Baltimore at 8 o'clock. Brooker was in good rhythm, but now working deliberately, and the 1-2 pitch is fouled back. He's mixing up his pitches, it seems to me, very well done. That was a good evidence. He has Kenny's been throwing Kenny the slow curve, dropping down, suddenly moves upstairs with the fastball. He's thrown some good change-ups, and he's had them in pretty good locations, too. He's just missed with a few of them. He's had a good curveball. He's jammed some right-hand hitters. And he's had an exceptional fastball so far. Two and two the count. But he's got Singleton and Murray, the two hitters against whom you dare not make a mistake. Oh, what a beauty. On the inside corner, Singleton does not like the call. Ah, oh, he's wrong. That pitch took him by surprise. It's exactly what we were talking about. He's mixing up his pitches beautifully. Well, he stayed away from him all the time, and now he comes back and nips that inside corner. There you see Nakuja setting inside. And it's right there. You can see the... Now, here's one of the... American League umpires, Jim McKeon, who will work with the inside protector. Lee McPhail, the president of the American League. Dick Butler, the supervisor of umpires. They've given the American League umpires that option. You do not use to ha you have to, don't have to use, I should say, that big balloon as Murray fouls it away. And there's a lot of them going to it. Matter of fact, there's probably more in the American League right now that are using that inside protector than are not. You see also Jim has that flap hanging down that Nicosia has started by the Dodger Steve Yeager to eliminate any foul tips from going back and catching in the throat of the Adams apple. That has become just about standard equipment now. Just about. It has. Yeager had an idea, and it was a good one. Well, you start getting hit there a few times, and you'll think of something. Started using that, kept his health, and stopped hitting. <laughs> 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 oh, one pitch. Popped up. Bill Garner is right there. And the Orioles are gone in the fourth inning. Rooker sailing along. No runs, no hits. They leave one at the end of three and a half in game five. Baltimore nothing. Pittsburgh nothing. Well, our helicopter just a few miles away now as you look down into Pitt Stadium, the home of the Panthers, the campus, the University of Pittsburgh. Where yesterday the Panthers beat Cincinnati 35-0. That's right, yesterday morning. The Cathedral of Learning. And proximate there to Old Forbes Field. No longer existing. Tim Foley leads off in the bottom of the fourth inning. Oh, and won the count. Foley's followers watched him collect three hits yesterday. He has five in the series. Bouncer foul. And the count is 0-2. 
And the outfield playing extremely shallow for Foley as Ayala will run that ball down. The center fielder Renicky, the right fielder Singleton, and Ayala will move back into a shallow position. Timmy, of course, up on that bat handle. I tell you, we're watching Flanagan now, but how impressive Rucker has been. The sensei on a hop. One out. Dave Parker coming up, struck out in the first inning. Now seven for 18 in the series. He talked with Howard before the game. Dave, it's the second time around for you against Flanagan. Last time you killed him. Four hits. What more can you do? Well, hopefully I can get four more today and possibly hit two, three run homers and put us out in front and get this gang out of our belt and go to Baltimore and clinch the World Series. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like his manager. Now the optimistic Chuck Tanner as Parker fouls it away. One one. And the big thing, the Pirates right now, they're getting an excellent job so far from Jim Rooker. They've got to just kick themselves a little bit. And of course, that was the <laughs> prediction by Fidel Castro. <laughs> ah. He said that he liked the Bucks. <laughs> After the topsy-turvy games we've had in this World Series, it's nice to see pitches assume finally total command as they have done at least until this point today the 0-2 delivery is up and away that can bust at any time with either of these teams as you have learned from the prior games now one thing about Pittsburgh they know that if they know what they have to do or they don't have to worry about coming back tomorrow struck him out Parker down on strikes for the second time. That's four strikeouts for Mike Flanagan. He's throwing low, Mike is, to Parker today. Don't forget tonight, Left that fielder, big matchup. Robinson. Special edition of NFL football. Sunday night, the Rams against the Cowboys. Tomorrow night, the Jets with the best running average in the NFL. The worst pass defense going against the Vikes. One and oh, the count on Bill Robinson, hitting with two out and the bases empty in the bottom of the fourth inning, no score. Two and oh. The Gipper, the Dan Daru, and Sir Francis will be together. They'll have to make the trek from Dallas up to New York. Straight back, two and one. I wish you folks could see Drysdale when a foul comes in this direction. <laughs> Come on, get back in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> Two one pitch. Line to right center toward the gap. Ken Singleton moving over and misplays it. Singleton couldn't put it off. And as a consequence, Robinson has a double. Looks like Kenny thought he might have a play on it initially. And then didn't gauge the bounce right. So it's a double for Bill Robinson, the second hit for the Pirates. Al so Flanagan gets the pitch up over the plate, and I think Kenny Singleton, the bat, the ball coming off of the bat into the rock as it feel that ball's going to be slicing back. Kenny thought that he had a chance at it, but the ball just landed out in front of him. And then, of course, it's just a matter of running it down, and if we can hold him to a double right there, and now you've got the captain. And Once again, Star Joe up. He's time at bat. Runner in scoring position. Stargo flied out his first trip. And Willie gets a bouncing ball to second. Dower has to wait for Murray to get there. Retired. Six times with runners in scoring position, Stargo has failed to come through. That's why it's still nothing, nothing. Back in a moment. Well, we go to the fifth inning in Pittsburgh. Rapidly paced ball game, no score. Two hits in the game, both belonging to the Pirates. Gary Renicky will be leading things off for the Orioles and with more play by play. The big D, the twin D, double D, <laughs> D squared. And pick your pick, Don Drysdale. All right, Al. Gary Renicky to lead it off, and there's Mrs. Renicky. And you know that the wives are all hoping that they can go back home tonight, world champion. It'll be Renicky, Desensei, and Dower in that order. 
Now, this is a man Rucker must be very careful of. He's got home run power, hit 25 of them on the season. And the scouting reports on him, Rucker is familiar with, but... Oh, that's a National League strike by an American League umpire. Though. Well, you've got him working on the inside. You've got him working with that inside chest protector. And you're going to get lower strikes from those kind of umpires. And here you take another peek at it. Right there. 0-1 to Renneke. Change is low. The count 1-1. One one. Renneke, he's a pull hitter. We mentioned before that during the course of the year, and he has hit home runs. He hits them in bunches. Despite the scouting reports that Rucker is closely studied, Renneke is still lesser known to up, up the alley, Moreno's got to hurry, and he can't get it. Has to play it off the wall. Renneke on his way for two, and he'll make it with a double. Now that is the first hit as you look at Mrs. Renneke. You know, she's happy. Gary standing at second base. Now that is the first Baltimore hit of the afternoon. A leadoff single, check that leadoff double by Renneke standing at second base, and now you've got Desensei. And here's where execution comes in. Desensei should be trying to move that ball to the right side. Now I'm convinced after Howard just said what he did that this is tape delay. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're talking about Renneke will get the hit. And he sure did that. He got the double up the alley, standing at second base. Desensei stands in. He struck out his first time at bat. One ball and no strikes. Again, the scores. Miami rebounding after two losses. 17-7 over tough Buffalo. The Bengals with their first victory, crushing injury riddle Pittsburgh. Then, of course, what a beauty that pitch was. New England giving it to the Chicago Bears. Philadelphia giving it to the Cardinals, coming from behind to do it. I tell you, those Eagles are amazing. A ball and a strike to Desensei. With Renneke at second, nobody out. Line drive. Gunner can't get it. Base hit right field. Parker will come to the plate. It'll be cut off by Scargill and Baltimore. As runners at first and third with nobody out. Garner went as high as he could go. Phil tried to time his jump perfectly on a little looper. It looked like at that point he might have a chance. But that's as high as he can possibly go. Just barely deflects it. And of course the runner at second, Renneke had to hold. And then be held at third. Well, runners at the corners with Renneke at third and Desensei at first. The first scoring threat for Baltimore. Nobody out. And all of a sudden, they might get some action down in the bullpen. You see Nicosia pointing out the infield and the, up the middle with Garner and Foley. They set for two. Madlock a few steps behind the bag at third with Stargell holding Desensei at first. The outfield all straight away. Dower popped to the first baseman Stargell his first time at bat 0 for 1. One ball and no strikes to count. Oh, so we sly old fox. Patiently waiting. Wry little twinkle in the eye. Sometimes looks like a leprechaun. Runner goes and it's fouled away. Now Weaver playing hit and run with Dower and Desensei. <laughs> well, there is tomorrow night's, or I should say Tuesday night's starting pitcher. If they should go that far, he was scheduled right-hander Bert Blylevin, but Chuck Tanner knows that if he doesn't win today, you forget Tuesday night. It's all over. One and one the count to Dower. Two and one. Renneke at third with Desensei at first. Renneke led off with a double here in the fifth. And Desensei, a little looping line drive over the glove of the second baseman, Phil Garner. Nobody out. No score. And keep Desensei close.
And it goes again. Garner underhands to Foley. Back to Stargill. Double play. Renicky scores. Baltimore leads it one to nothing. Well, Dower with the infield at double play depth. He knows the ground ball is going to score a run, and Garner is able to get there. He was moving towards second. And over to Foley in time for the force and back on to Stargell for the double play. But interestingly enough, the only run in the game on the double play as we take a look again, coming in hard at second base. The Sensei to take out Foley, but he still gets a strong throw over to Stargell. But it's one to nothing, Baltimore. And the catcher, Rick Dempsey, stands in. Pass ball away. One and know the count. Key point is they got the run. They continue to make their hits count, even though the hits have been fewer than the number of pirate hits. One ball, one strike to Dempsey. He bounced to third his first time at bat, 0 for 1. Chuck Tanner, you've got to feel for Chuck. Two balls in a strike. He might have tuned in late. This is Tanner, Chuck's mother, passing away this morning. His ball club down three games to one. There's the breaking pitch for the strike in the count, 2-2. Two, two. You could see the distraction all over the clubhouse, dug out. There's Kent, who worked again last night, and gave up those hits to Lowenstein and Crowley. A full count to Dempsey. Three balls, two strikes, two outs are running for Baltimore. They lead it one to nothing. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Hard base hit left field. So that double play Dower hit into looms very large now. Even so, Dempsey getting on is a boon for the birds because they get Flanagan out of the way and can begin the next Sister inning Mike with Garcia. Now here is Mike Flanagan, and that's exactly right. You love to have that pitcher come up and lead off the inning if you possibly can. There's Mrs. Flanagan. That's the young lady you met in the up close and personal in the pregame show. Breaking pitches low to Flanagan. He fly to center his first time at bat. Mike is 0 for 1. He was 0 for 4 opening night, but he said. He swings the bat pretty good. 2-0 the count. In the inning, the leadoff double by Renicky. The little looping line drive. Base hit to right by DeSensei. Put runners at first and third. Dower hit into the... There's Blylevin in the bullpen. Dower hit into the double play with a run scoring, and that's where we stand. Two balls and a strike. Bert Blylevin scheduled to start on Tuesday night if there is a Tuesday night, but he's going now. Two and two the count. Say one thing for Mike. He means business up there. He fancies himself a hitter. He turns it loose. Now we saw Scott McGregor, too. He's a pretty good-looking hitting pitcher. And the count goes full at three and two. And the full count, runner at first, Dempsey will be going with the pitch. Stargell will move in and play in behind. <laughs> Harvey Haddix, Chuck Tanner, runner goes, foul away. Addicts, of course, the pitching coach for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Giants winning their second of seven. Tampa Bay losing their second of seven. Washington beating Cleveland. And what a job Bobby Bethard has done for the Redskins. And putting that team together, they have won five of seven. Runner goes, pitch just outside, and Rooker thought he had him struck out, and so did Nicosia. Now Flanagan walk. Last thing in the world you want to do. Runner now in scoring position. There you take another look at it. Oh, that's 
close bit. It really was. But in the meantime, Garcia, clearly a hot hitter. Six RBIs in the series. Six for 12 in the series. Coming to the plate. Rooker, his first inning of trouble. He had not allowed a hit until this, the fifth inning. Kiko 0 for 2 this afternoon. 1 and 0 the count. Outside and the count 2 and 0. Well, all of a sudden, home plate starting to bounce around a little bit on Jim Rooker. You saw Chuck Tanner. He is taking the cap off, and that means a signal to the bullpen. He's, is he ready? Bounce to Foley. He'll underhand to Garner, and the side is retired. But Baltimore comes up with a run in the fifth inning. And after four and a half, it's now Baltimore one and Pittsburgh nothing. Well, Bill Madlock to lead it off. And, of course, Madlock coming to Pittsburgh from the San Francisco Giants. Great trade, and Howard talked to him prior to the game. Bill, you seem reborn as a member of the Bucks. So different from when you're in San Francisco. What went wrong there? Well, I think out in San Francisco and the other teams I play for, they try to mold you into being a giant or a cub. With a team like the Pirates, you can be yourself. You can enjoy yourself. You can go out and have fun. They enjoy themselves even when they're losing. I guess, the, like I said before, what I like about this team is not how to react when they win. It's how to react when they lose. And I think I have learned a lot from that because it's easy to jump up and down when you win. But when you lose, they come in and act the same way. Just like I got to get them tomorrow. They don't put any pressure on no one. I think that's one main thing I like about the Pirates. Now, Bill Madlock to lead it off, followed by Nicosia and Garner. And he's told the exact truth. That team, There's oh, a... what a magnificent view. That is the inner city. As the finish hit up the middle. So Madlock is two for two, and the Bucks are trying to come back. They've got to win today, or there's no tomorrow. Here's a beautiful hit, a simply beautiful hit. That short, straight swing. Seems to be a hitter without a real weakness. Two-time National League batting champion with the Chicago Cubs. I just wonder if the guaranteed contracts today take away a little bit about that worrying about if you lose or not. Now, runner at first, nobody out. Nicosia stands in. He flied to left his first time at bat. Uh, he was totally right. That's the way the Bucks are as a team, and it it's, gives you kind of glow to see it. But today, of course, the Bucks openly distracted over the loss of their manager's wife. It's Chuck Tanner, the man who's handled so many men so well, who is responsible for Matt Locke's feeling about that team. Well, Nikosia's had his talk with the third base coach, Joe Lynette, and we'll see how Chuck Tanner wants to play right here. They got action in the bullpen. And look out! And they just miss him. Flanagan with that hesitation, and Madlock almost got caught leaning the other way. Back on a very close play. Really close. I think inadvertently I said Chuck's wife was his mother. And hangs heavy in that dugout. Now Flanagan with a good move. He's worked on that a few years ago. He did not have a good move at all the first base. As a matter of fact, he classified it as just outright poor. But he's got a good one now. He'll come up and he'll hesitate. And that makes it a little tough on runners over there if you want to try and get that good jump. If you want to try and cheat a little bit, why he'll catch you. He can come up and hesitate and hold. Well, it's been the case of Baltimore with the timely base hits. Pittsburgh, who has out hit Baltimore in the series, they just have not been able to get the timely base hit. One and all the count. Baltimore on top, one to nothing. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Both clubs with three hits apiece.
Loop foul out of play. The count one and one. You got one of the key points when you keep emphasizing the Bucks' failure to hit in the clutch. They're hitting over 300, 329 for the series coming into this game. Only twice in World Series history has a team batted 300 and still lost the series. The Brooklyn Dodgers in 53 to the Yankees. And the Yankees hit 338 but lost to these very Bucks in 1960. Now well, they're moving back again. What Flanagan has done after that first move over there when they just about picked him off. They've kept him close, and there's a strike in the count one and two to Nicosia. There's another look at it. Off speed curve ball right there. Beautiful pitch. This young man is really quite a pitcher. Good fastball. He'll throw that slow curve in the hard breaking pitch, and there he holds and goes to first again. Now, Nicosia, who hit 288 on the year with limited duty, is a hitter who'll fool you. He's shown us that he is a real good low ball hitter with good power. There's the hard breaking pitch. He tried to nip that inside corner and missing the count 2 2. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. The tying run at first base, Bill Madlock, one to nothing, Baltimore, bottom of the fifth. Fouls it away, the count remains 2 2. Now you saw Mike, the last two pitches, he got the ball up. They'll learn it. Don't forget tonight on ABC, out of the blue, a new kind of family. Extraordinary. Robin Williams, Mark and Mindy, the associates, starting at 7, Eastern, 6 Central. Mike just wants Madlock to know that he's certainly aware that he's over there. Good game. Oh. What a pitch, and down. Did you see, Don? Mixing them up. There's another look at it, Al. Well, Flanagan, he's that type of pitcher. You can't really go up there looking for off-speed stuff. It's very difficult. I know very few hitters who've ever said, I can go to the plate and expect an off-speed pitch. It's the other way around. you got to go up thinking hard stuff. And he's thrown off again. So that's five strikeouts now for Flanagan. Here's the little Peppa Bot and Lee Lacy, pinch hitter extraordinaire on deck. And Phil Garner to stand in. He tried to push a bunt by Flanagan his first time at bat, and Flanagan threw him out. There's Lacy in the on deck circle, so Tanner going to the bullpen early. Lee, as I've suggested in earlier games, hit five pinch hit home runs for the Dodgers in a given year. The all time record established by Johnny Frederick of the Brooklyn Dodgers back in the late 20s with six. Hit well left field, but it appears to be playable. Ayala to the warning track to make the catch, and Madlock has to go back. What a little pep about that goner is, though. He's had a difficult series in the field, but it hasn't affected his hitting at all. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. Here's Lacey. Well, you've got to say Rooker did his job. A surprise starter and gives up a run on three hits. Bly Levin will come on to take over the pitching chores. There's Bird down in the bullpen for Pittsburgh. We mentioned before he was going to be the scheduled starter on Tuesday night. But Chuck Tanner knows that if they don't win today, there will be no Tuesday night. Baltimore. That's what they would like to do. But so far, Baltimore on top three games to one, and Lacey fouls it down the left field line. Flanagan's got a few pitches up. He got the pitch up to Garner that sent Ayala to the warning track. He got that pitch up to Lacey. That's Madlock at first with Murray holding. Slow. 
the bottom of the fifth. It is one to nothing Baltimore. And the accumulating tension begins to present itself. You can feel it in the arena. Good change in the count of one two. Rucker out. Let's look at the number of pitches he threw inning by inning. He never threw more than 16 in any inning except the fifth when he threw 26. That's when he gave up the run. Hit to the hole. The sensei is throw is no throw. The turf made that a hit. Nothing but the turf. However, he may have been mistaken in cutting it off. He poached, as they say in tennis. Absolutely, as it goes to the hole, Garcia, if he comes up with a play, might have a force out at second base. And Pico looks like he's ready. He's in position to pick it up and throw over to second. But all of a sudden, the sensei is right there. And Doug just can't get his footing as he goes down. And now it's a base hit. But one must judge that the sensei made a mental mistake. Well, it would have been an easy play for Garcia. As Al said, he was right there. All he's got to do is catch it go the short way. It would have been a close play at second base. The ball was not hit that hard. Here's Omar Marino and there's Mrs. Marino. Mrs. Marino. Third ball for the strike. Who's Time and again, Omar has been up in tough situations. There she is with the whistle. Marino 0 for 2 today has struck out and popped it short. Oh, and two the count. I'll tell you one thing. Moreno is going to go home, and he's going to go to bed all winter looking at left-handers curveballs off of this Baltimore staff. <laughs> There's a staff oh, right that there. That tells the story. That's it. He and Willie Stodgell are the ones who have the great Willie. And is an honest reporting relief to. Shook oh. him out. There the side retired, and after five, it's still one to nothing. Baltimore, and we'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local station. So it'll be Al Bumbry. He will come on, and he will take over for Benny Ayala, and you can insert him in that second spot, and he undoubtedly will go into center field. <laughs> Quite a difference, eh? <laughs> well, it's my pleasure and privilege to tell all of you that Bob Euchre is here in the ballpark today, but not masked, wearing no fictitious, or presuming to be no fictitious figure, the great catcher of the past, Probably the best 190 hitting catcher in the history of baseball. <laughs> now, Blylevin comes on. Hurt worked six innings in game two, allowed five hits, two runs, both earned. He had no decision. Bumbry leading it off. Top to shallow left, left center, and there is Robinson moving over. And is out number one. Now we go to Ken Singleton. Right there, Singleton is flying to Singleton. center, and he was caught looking. Kenny 0 for 2. Game moving along and running out of time. It is Baltimore 1, Pittsburgh nothing, and a do or die game for the Pirates. That's why there is the tension hanging heavy in this ballpark now. They know there are only a matter of innings, and yet there is only one run to be obtained by the Pirates to be right back. One ball, no strikes. Birds themselves desperate for an insurance run with reliance upon their ace. 23 game winner Mike Flanagan. Two balls and no strike. Well, once again, you see Pittsburgh out hitting Baltimore, but Pittsburgh just cannot come up with that key base hit. Baltimore can. It's a two hopper hit to Garner. And that is out number two. Here's Eddie Murray. He has fly to right. And he popped to Garner at second base. 0 for 2. Eddie Murray. Eddie Murray. Had a big night against Bird Fly 11. A homer, a double, and a single. 
Lash that homer into the middle deck at Memorial Stadium. Remember, Dunn? I do. He got a change. It was up over the plate. But just didn't take too much off of it. There's where we'll be, if necessary, on Tuesday night. Game six from Baltimore, 8 o'clock Eastern, on Wednesday the same time, if necessary, in game seven. Want to know the count? One to nothing Baltimore. We're in the top of the six. Two and oh the count. Pitch was not that close. Eddie just spinning out of there and losing the cap and batting helmet. This is a strong fellow, this Eddie Murray. Don said the pitch was not that close. Eddie was hanging in there waiting to see if it would tail off. Tail off. 2-0. and oh. <laughs> There's the strike and the count goes to 2-1. and one. You don't want to let one like that go by, <laughs> Mr. Drysdale. Pretty good pitch as you look at manager Earl Weaver. And I think Eddie Murray would like to say, let me have one more of those, please. Y11 starting before Murray was ready and Eddie calling time. Two balls and a strike, two outs. We're in the top of the six. The Orioles lead it one to nothing. Two and two the count. I'll tell you, you would almost have bet your house in luck that Pittsburgh would not get swept three games here at Three River Stadium. Well, they haven't been swept yet. Next pitch is hit to the hole right there. Garner goes right under his glove, and Parker will make the play and get it back in. I think Garner just got his feet crossed up. Shaking his head. There you see Phil moving over. There he is as Garner goes to his left. It looks like he gets there in time, and let's see if he does get his feet crossed up as... Don just referred to as you can see the ball went underneath his glove to skid it on him. Didn't get his glove down. Look that he might have got on the wrong foot. What are the three official scorers doing? They have not made a statement as yet. We are not dealing with a problem in nuclear physics. This is Renicky. There's a curveball and a good one for a strike. And Golden they give him an error. Renicky led off the fifth inning with a double off of the starter Jim Rooker. Moved to third on a base hit to right and scored on a double play. There's a good curve ball. 0-2 the count. Bly Levin showing an excellent curve ball. There's a stat that's a little, little surprising right there. Since 1972, his first relief appearance. Curve ball swung on Wickley and missed. What a curve ball. So Baltimore is gone in the sixth inning as you look at it again. And after five and one half, it is Baltimore one and Pittsburgh nothing. Gary Renicky will move over to left field from his starting center field position. And Al Bumbry, who came on to pinch hit, he stays in the game and he's in center field. So Earl Weaver has his best defensive outfield out there right now as they try to go to some weather here over the last four innings. This is Foley and the baby. <laughs> All way to lead it off. Low ball one. Tim is flying to center. And he has bounced to third. We flip for Foley. Low ball two, two and oh. That's all it takes. Get get these fans aroused. That's right there, that little baby. That's why Tim was so thrilled to get the new five-year contract. There's the strike, and the count goes to two and one. It'll be Foley, Parker, and Robinson. It's something to begin the season with the Mets and to wind up playing for the World Championship.
That's the first ball three count that Flanagan has had on any hitter this afternoon. That shows you about what Mr. Flanagan is made of. There's a growing feeling in this ballpark now. The 3-1 pitch. He walks him. Flanagan not too happy with that call, nor was Dempsey. Well, they've got themselves an American League umpire there. They don't have a lot to complain about. But Dave Parker, Bill Robinson, and Willie Starcher. Sure did look like a strike, I must say. <laughs> Here's Dave Parker, has struck out twice against Flanagan. Here's where the Bucks are hoping that they can get back to the form of Mr. Parker in game one when he had four hits off of Flanagan. Baltimore on top, one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the sixth, and time running out on the Bucks. You got their lineup done. Four innings to get one run. No. Plenty of time. There's plenty of time. There's a man right there that can also equalize anything that you might want to do in a hurry. Mike Flanagan. But he's human. Oh, yeah. Misses inside. There's the Baltimore bullpen. Stoddard on the left and Tippy Martinez over on the right, the left-hander. Stoddard, big game yesterday. And Baltimore's also big come from behind win. Base hit center field. See what I mean? Foley to second, and he'll hold right there as Bunbury gets on it in a hurry. Who can get Parker only so often. And now a tough hitter. Bill Robinson with 24 homers on the season, who has already clipped Flanagan for that double to right center. Now there's nobody out. Robinson stands in, one for two. You look at Parker again. And Parker, after striking out twice, delivering the blow here in the center field. So Parker, with four hits off Flanagan in game one. Mike had his number the first two times up today. And now Robinson coming up first and second. Now Robinson has bounced to third. He doubled in the fourth. He was left stranded at second base. And here you put yourself in a position. If you're Chuck Tanner, runners at first and second, you're down a run, you're in the sixth. Do you bunt with Robinson? Do you let him hit? We'll see how they want to go. They're going to bunt. And it's out in front of the plate and a good one. Flanagan has but one play, and that's to Murray at first. The runners move up for Sargent. Chuck Tanner made the right play, the only play. Yes, sir. Got to tie this game. He's at home. You play the tie. You don't play around. And once again, Willie Stodgill in a key situation. Runners on second and third. And, and Earl Weaver to the mound, Art. One Hawkins back to the late Frankie Frisch and his classic maxim. Oh, those bases on balls. Oh, you hang around this game and you work games every day of the week throughout the course of the year and I'll... It's amazing how many base on balls come back to score. Absolutely staggering. Well, what do you think he told them, Al? I don't know, but whatever Weaver says whenever he goes out, he knows exactly what's on his mind. You'll see some managers go out there, say a few words, maybe counsel with a couple of other players. But Earl goes out every single time and says, look, this is the way it is. Everybody listens the way he goes back to the dugout. Well, you've got a great hitter up next in Bill Matlock. Two for two today. Seven for 16 on the series. Got a left hand to pitch. Here's Stargell. Misses a run. Do you pitch carefully to him. Give him nothing to hit. Put him on. Hope for the double play. Flanagan should walk him. Do you come in with a right-handed reliever? Hit hard. Well, the thing here, Stargell, if he just makes contact to any part of the infield, Pittsburgh is going to pick up a run outside of something hit hard to Desensei at third. He's the... He's the short man. Well, you saw Willie go for the golf ball. Hitting the low pitch again. A ball and a strike to Stargell. One out, two on. One to nothing Baltimore. We're in the bottom half of the sixth. Misses low. Two and one. Willie can atone for a lot with a base hit here. All else will be forgotten. 
Bumbry deep in the alley right center. Kiko Garcia is deep and behind the line at his shortstop position. Dower towards the hole between first and second. Hit well. It will score the run. There's Bumbry. Runners tag. Bumbry with the catch. Here comes Foley. Parker to third. It's a tie game at one. No quit in the box. No quit. Look at it again. Boy, Stargell stayed on that curveball night. Oh, they scratch and claw. Bumbry has no play on Foley. He's going to Parker at third, but no play to get the big man there. So now, the go-ahead run 90 feet away. Bill Madlock already two for two. And the Buck fans come alive as they have tied it at one. One and all the count. And this guy can kill you. And the base on balls has come back to tie the game. The only man that Flanagan went to a three ball count on, he eventually walked him. That was Tim Foley. To center field, that's a base hit. Here comes Parker, it's two to one, Pittsburgh. Oh, again he comes through. He is now 8 out of 17 on the series. And with the Bucks to come on to win it, he'll be getting consideration despite some fielding lapses as the MVP. Oh, is he tough. Bill Madlock, he had already solved plenty good plays today with a couple of hits. Picks up his third of the day. Madlock, and we said it before, the depth of the Pirate lineup, how they can hit. Best illustrated by the fact the man's won a couple of batting titles, yet hit sixth in the order. This is Nicosia. Madlock at first hit to the third baseman, Desensei. The long throw. they got to hurry. And they get it. Oh, what a great scoop by Eddie Murray. And for that matter, a good play by Desensei. Today we're getting a beautifully played ball game. Look at it again, Al. Doug Desenze making about as long a throw as you'll ever see a third baseman make, not only in foul territory, but well back of the bag. And a great scoop at first. So the Bucks score two, and through six, it's two to one Pittsburgh. Well, there you are, Howard. You know that town well. I'm going back. <laughs> I'm going back. What a beautiful, what a glorious, glorious shot. shot. Great. Now from it. Three Rivers Stadium. And that's where we are. That's where the action is. I'm Don Drysdale with Al Michaels, Howard Gosell. The do it or die game for the Pittsburgh Pirates through six. It's Pittsburgh, two runs, six hits in air. Baltimore, a run on three hits, no airs. And we go to the seventh, and once again, here's Al. I wonder what Jim Palmer is thinking. <laughs> Jim Palmer would be the starter in game number six on Tuesday night. As Bert Blylevin, with a one-run lead now, goes to work on Doug DeSense to start the seventh inning. Foul to the plate, on one. You give Drysdale a couple of innings, he'll yep. always get uh -huh. your rocks. It never changes. <laughs> DeSense has struck out single. This is the first time he has faced Blylevin. Jim Rooker pitched very well through five, allowing just the one run. Fly 11 on in the sixth and now working in the seventh. Foul away in the count. 0 oh 2. Now there's going to be a tough play if that pitches or that ball is going to be fair. There's Palmer. He's loosening up and I would say mainly for the start if they need him. They'll have an off day tomorrow and then play if necessary will resume and that will be from Memorial Stadium in Baltimore on Tuesday night. Game time 8 o'clock Eastern. You've got to ride an elevator with these two teams. Their comeback capacity is just tremendous. So with three innings to go, it's a long way to go for the Bucks. Here's a big inning for Bert Blylevin. His team has put him on top by a run. If he can go out there and then just shut out Baltimore right here, you've got that adrenaline going for the Pirates to come back in the seventh inning. The 0-2 pitch got him swinging. Oh, boy. He has really pitched the Sensei beautifully, and yet the Sensei had a career batting average going into the series. 
of 344 against him. There's a different type breaking pitch from Boylev, and he has that deep overhand, deep cutting curve, as Charlie, the late Charlie Dressen would say, but right there, flattens it out. Good pitch. Rich Dower popped out, hit into a double play. A strike. That's the way the Orioles got their only run. Runners at first and third. And the double play scoring the man from third as Blylevin just delivered a 91-mile-an-hour fastball to Dower. A National League strike. Right there. Right there. Oh, yep. oh and two. Boy, as Blylevin pitched well in postseason play. He has he, the look of a hot pitcher, Al. He was sparkling in the game that clinched the playoffs against Cincinnati and pitched well in game two. Easy play for Tim Foley. Two down. Burn. Give Chuck Tanner credit for bringing in Lila. A brilliant move. And you consider this man hasn't been used in relief since 72. But Howard, I'll tell you, in a game like this, you can't hold them back. You know when they open up again? Next spring. Mm -hmm. That's when your next start will be. Dempsey looks at a strike, 0 and 1. There's Chuck Tanner, Bob Skinner on his right, Harvey Haddock's a pitching coach on his left. Seeing Bradenton. <laughs> <laughs> the 0 1 is fouled back. 0 and 2. You think that Dutchman isn't pumped mm. up? Woo. Born in Zeist Holland. Lined in the center field for a base hit. Moreno goes deep to cut it off. Dempsey's going to try to take the extra base, and he's in there. I tell you, they never stop fighting. Not even one of these teams. It's been the pattern of this series. Well, Earl Weaver's going to go to the bullpen. He's got his man that was in that designated hitter spot all season long down in that on-deck circle, Lee May. Now, whether he is being called back or not, I don't know. On that play by Marino, that ball was kind of cutting and rolling away from him a little bit, but I'm surprised that he rounded it off that far instead of getting over to cut it off. Now, he just keeps going back on the ball. He's got better speed than that. The further he goes to the alley, why, the more Dempsey is just turning it into overdrive and going to second base. Well, Weaver's going to go to the bench, and as you look at Pat Kelly, May was out into the on-deck circle, and now Pat Kelly, the left-hand batter, instead of the right-hand hitting May, with a man at second, coming up. And Chuck Tanner is on his way to the mound. Well, here's a case where you've got Kelly coming on, you've got first base open, and you've got the leadoff hitter, Kiko Garcia, a right-hand hitter, in that on-deck circle. And here, Chuck Tanner, you infielders have to know one thing. Any ball hit by you one way or the other, to the left or to the right, you've got to dive. You've got to knock it down if you can. You can't let it go through. You talk about hustle. Look at Rick Dempsey. I'll tell you, Rick Dempsey has been on cloud 10 since the opening of the playoff series with the California Angels. He has been pumped up as much as you can pump a person up. Look at that. He almost slides right over the bag. Now well, let's see what... Mm. Uh, the career record against Bly Levin, not good, but then the Sensei's was great. And Bly Levin has eaten up Doug in this series. Just yeah. eaten him up. A lot of those things in World Series, well, you just put them away. Bly Look Levin out. throws back to second, and the ball gets away, but not far enough. As Bird spun the other way, which a lot of pitchers are starting to do. Now and you've got Grant Jackson in the bullpen warming up. Get the left-hander ready. Game of chess goes on now in full force. Let's see what the orders were with regard to pitching the Kelly. Ran it in on him. Check swing. They appeal. Don't get the call. Ball one. One and go. Third base on fire, Bob Engel. Pirates two, Orioles one. 
two out in the seventh inning. Dempsey with a double off fly, 11, the first hit yielded by Bird. Two and zero. Oh. Well, I would be very surprised if they come back even with a fastball here. Kelly is a good triple hitter. He gets ahead of you, and you just think, well, I'll just throw a little fastball in there and try and get the count even again. Look out. And he didn't, but he yep. missed. And they call it. This time they get the strike. Two and one. <laughs> Kelly knows it. He was a cripple shooter in that final game at Anaheim. Oh, yes, three run he homer. Did. He did, and he hit it a ton. Ooh. Two and two. What a rip. You think he isn't? He'd like to have that one back. Had after that swing, just gritting his teeth and saying, oh no. Game six. If the Pirates can keep it alive on Tuesday, we know it'll be Jim Palmer. Chuck Tanner, we'll worry about that later. He just wants to get there. Staff. <laughs> yeah. Planning dinner in Baltimore? <laughs> well, wouldn't be all that bad. Two balls and two strikes. Dempsey at second. Two down. Got it. Oh. <laughs> Lyleven goes 2-0 oh with Kelly and then comes back to get him. And what a curveball he got him with, Al. No runs, a hit. Dempsey stranded at second. Middle of the seventh inning. 2-1. to one. Bucks. From our helicopter, looking down into Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, where the Pittsburgh Pirates came up with two runs in the bottom of the sixth inning, trying to stay alive. First game in Baltimore, won by the Orioles, and the Buccos evened it up in game two, as one of yesterday's stars, Tim Stoddard. Yesterday's hero. Yep. <laughs> Find out about him today. Stoddard on in relief in the bottom of the seventh inning. The 6-7, former basketball star at North Carolina State. Played on an NCAA champion Wolfpack team. Facing Garner, Bly Levin, and Marino in the bottom of the seventh inning. One and all. This is Phil Garner. Well, she just takes it easy now, Phil. They'll be walking into any of those fastballs like that. At the <laughs> Phil got to slap a little color back in his face. Ooh. He almost walked into a tailing fastball. This big guy can turn it loose. One ball and one strike. In yesterday's game, in the three innings that Stoddard worked, he got in a good workout. He threw 44 pitches. That's not bad. Got his first hit in organized ball, drove in a run. That's unbelievable. You think that yep. isn't a storybook? Incredible. You dream about that. One and two. In the bullpen, the left-hander, Tippy Martinez, throwing back of Stoddard. I'm not going to worry about the amount of time Stoddard worked yesterday. Look at the size of it. Huh. I had to laugh after yesterday's game at the ending. You know how Dempsey, he gets so fired up, he'll go out and jump up on a pitcher. He jumped up, he just kind of went out and grabbed Stoddard. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't lift him up at all. <laughs> Three and two on Garner. Flanagan gave up two runs, six hits, and six innings of work. Walked only one, and that came back to kill him. Struck out six. Chopper. No play for Garcia. Phil Garner. An infield single to start the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, here, you may as well just pick it up, stick it in your pocket, and forget about it because Garner, who runs well, Garcia made a fine barehanded, the only way that he'd ever have any chance whatsoever. Look at how far Garner was by the bat. So now Fly Levin comes up, presumably to punt. The Sensei will play in shallow at third. Murray wants to get together with 
Dower. Well, everybody in the ballpark knows what Blylevin will be doing right here. The thing that you've got to think about on the artificial surface when you go to punt, you've got to make sure, you've got to really practice a lot. You've got to really deaden that ball just to get a bat on it and push it somewhere. That doesn't mean a thing because it gets to a charging infielder or back to the pitcher in a hurry. Here's Bly Levin's wife. Throw to first as Garner gets back. Throw Tell you, on this artificial turf, pal, I think of the old Casey Stengel axiom. Put your boy the ball. Put your boy. Hit Put your on. boy. Hit it down. That's just what Garner did when he got on first That's base. That's right. Put your boy the ball, and the ball goes 12 feet in the air, and it never comes down. <laughs> That's the way to use this artificial turf. That's Harry Walker's theory of hitting. <laughs> That's right. Swing away and butcher it down. <laughs> Garner goes crawling back in. Now, I mentioned yesterday about Stoddard throwing the 44 pitches in relief. Only 35 of those were strikes. <laughs> hey, cut that ball over there well. He does. That's something about this Baltimore staff. Boy, every one of them, they come right at you. They don't fool around. They don't nitty-pick. Garner, a very sizable lead as Blylevin takes up hot ball one. Interesting. Stoddard does have a good move, does a good job, which is interesting for a pitcher who is so big. You see a lot of fellows 6'6 and 6'7 who have a lot of problems. Well, there's Miller going out to the mound, and he's going to probably tell Stoddard, now look it. Don't let him bother you over there to where all of a sudden you end up losing this guy at the plate. They're going to bunt. Let him bunt. And we'll go about from there. Repeats on the football scores. The stunning upset of the injury-riddled Steelers by Cincinnati, 34-10. Philadelphia keeps its record with only one defeat. And, of course, the Giants crushing San Francisco. New Orleans destroying Tampa Bay. Washington over Cleveland, 13-9. Tonight, the Rams against the Cowboys, live from Dallas, Texas, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. I'll make it Irving, Texas, Te technically Texas Stadium. Tony Dorsett and the gang against the Rams defense. Fly Levin gets it down, but Stoddard's going to go to second, and they get the fours. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, you've got to be impressed with Stoddard, a man of that size, fielding his position that well down off the mound in a hurry. Going to Garcia, they erase the lead man, and with one out, Blylevin's at first. Well, the ball has to be bunted. you got to take it off. You see Blylevin getting his hands out there quite a ways, but here's Stoddard. He got off the mound very good. He wheeled, and right there, a perfect throw to Garcia. That's what he used to do to David Thompson. Wing the ball in. He had more assists that way. Here is Marino. Crowd really got on Omar after the fifth inning when he struck out with two men on. And the ever-present whistle of Mrs. Marino. You know something? We may vote in the booth for her for the MVP. <laughs> <laughs> she blows that whistle again. Stoddard's going to stop thinking the foul was called. <laughs> when you stop to think the way gone a butcher boyed the ball remember started a 6-7 he got it over him do it all the count started not too happy with that call <laughs> <laughs> Marino waiting in the box started taking his time bucks ahead 2-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh with one out Two and one. One out. The count, two balls and a strike on Marino. Hit foul off to the left and out of play in the count, two and two. And the one thing you get when you don't get that sacrifice down and you got to have your pitcher at first base in Blylevin. The main thing, one of the things that it kind of clogs up the bases on anything that yep. might transpire with this man standing here with Moreno.
soft looper foul. Outside third and a broken bat, so Omar will get a new piece of wood. In the bullpen for the Orioles now. Stand the man unusual. <laughs> Bullpack. Houston has defeated Baltimore on the margin 12. Denver is pouring it on Kansas City. Red Miller's team holding together in New England has ripped Chicago. Green Bay has taken the lead over Detroit. Oakland is slugging Atlanta and San Diego and a toughie holding on against Seattle. Two balls, two strikes on Marino with Bly Levin at first base. One away. The 2-2 pitch. Grounded and a great stop by Garcia. The force at second. What a play by Kiko. Exactly what Don Drysdale was talking about. In a situation like this, the World Series at stake. Isolated now on Garcia. You dive. You throw the body. You don't let that ball go through. And that's what you see right here. Now, look at that. And, as circumstances would have it, he could easily execute the force play. A great play by Garcia that has the ripple effect of getting that man, Marino, on first base. Look for the attempted steal. Well, Foley, he knows one thing. He's going to get some heat. They're not going to be moving around and fooling around with any off-speed pitches or too many of those for this big guy out there. And Marino at first base. And there's a case of clogging up the bases again, Al. If that sacrifice is down, you got runners at first and third. Instead, two out. Marino at first base, a strike. Remember, the Pirates have not stolen a base in this series. Marino at 77 during the regular season. Well, this is the time to go. Don't you agree, Don? I got to try and do make something happen right here. They pitch out. Nothing doing. You know what Baltimore's thinking. The guy's got to go. I'd pitch out again right here. And Jackie Robinson would have come up and slugged him. <laughs> There's a thing, Stoddard. That's, that's not a bad move. It's a good move. A man on first base that has good speed. Make him stop. Make him stop. Don't let him get that walking lead and go on you. Don't let him stay on his toes. Try and make him hold on his toes if he wants to. Pretty soon he's got to get a little tired and go back on his heel. That's when you pit. Stoddard, good move to first base. Marino, average size lead at the moment, now stretching it out. And again, he drives him back. I tell you, Stoddard keeps his boys. He's got a good move, too. It's quick, like you said, Al, for a big guy. The key to it doesn't really make any difference how big you are, honestly. It's how quick you can move your feet. That's the key to any mm -hmm. pickoff. That was your problem. No, I didn't have that. Either have a quick feet or a quick knee. <laughs> and again, the move, and this time it gets by Murray, who picks up the carom and throws the second, and it's not in time. Just when I said he kept this ball. Well, here's a tough play for Eddie Murray. That throw down into the runner. And, boy, that is Death Valley. For him. Actually, it hits Marino. Murray almost came up with a super play because he got on that ball in a hurry. A good, strong throw to Garcia. And Marino had to hustle to get down there safely. The error to Stoddard. The first Oriole error of the day. And the 1-1 pitch to Foley is lined in the right center field for a base hit. And more is it a roll all the way to the fence. Marino scores. That makes it 3-1. to one. Foley is on his way to third. Dower will just eat it in the outfield, and it's 3-1. Now 
other folks are seeing their butts the way they played all year. Foley again, the contact hitter, the guy who virtually never strikes out, the guy who uses the infield to get hits, and then he'll hit you with one like that. Perfectly placed, and look at those fans, and here comes Earl Weaver. He's going to go to the left-hander right now. The outfield playing extremely shallow, and Foley couldn't have just taken a two-iron and hit it out there any better than that. That ball is just over the glove of Dower. Now it's slicing away from Bumbry, and by the time they roll it through and pick it up off the wall, Moreno scores easily, and Foley on a third with a triple. Quite a World Series, ladies and gentlemen. The Quite a World Series. Two evenly matched teams. As I said, clatching and strong. We'll be back. Exactly right now, Moreno. Garcia's behind him, but Garcia... That throw is a little bit into the runner, and actually Garcia, as you say, Al, you had it perfectly. He was just handcuffed. His main objective at that time was just let me catch the ball. 1-1 one, one pitch coming up to Parker. 2-1. Well, this game quickly paced at the outset. <laughs> he breezed through four, and here we go again. <laughs> apparently going to make three hours again. <laughs> yep. About 15 minutes shy of that mark right now. They throw to first on a set play, and it's a wild throw that winds up in the seats. So Garcia is moving back of second base. Stan has looking there and then going to first to try to catch the back man napping and threw it away. And I believe that got Foley in the batting helmet. Here you see Murray trying to sneak in behind. Foley's okay, but that got him in the helmet. Tanner and Tony Barteron got him in the side of the helmet and ricocheted all the way into the seat. Thank goodness for the helmet. Mm. Marino moving over to third. Foley scratching. <laughs> <laughs> You got to do more than that to get Foley out of there. I'll guarantee you. Can't you see these guys all fired up now, the Bucks? The error charge to Stanhouse. Another walk to Parker. Robinson on deck. And we'll see if Tanner might want to counter with Milner. Throw to third. Nancy trying to get Marino asleep. The intentional walk, the bases are loaded. And Robinson will back for himself. And I think right here the reason behind that. They're gonna they're gonna stay with the leather. They're gonna stay with the leather. As you look at Moreno again, they tried to whip it down there in a hurry, but Omar said, no, 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 come on now. <laughs> so the Pirates have hit around in the inning. Robinson, the ninth man to come up, one for three, plus a sacrifice. Crowd chanting T I R A T E S. Wow, Bill has a clone in Pittsburgh. One and all. Wild Bill Hagee, you'll be seeing him again. A lot on that man's mind today. Oh, boy. A lot of memories, a lot of love. popped up and this will end the inning as the sensei gets underneath it and makes the catch but in the inning three more runs for the Pirates on four more hits they have 13 in the game and the Orioles coming up to face Bert Blylevin in the top of the ninth inning in game number five the Pittsburgh Pirates leading the Baltimore Orioles seven to one the parrot and there they are as Jed Forty's cameras pan over the people standing as one sister sledge in the background we are family and the sign corroborates it a people in unison this is what I meant when I said in an earlier game what a successful sports franchise can do for a people it's no different in Baltimore they brought pride to cities that like all cities have been troubled 
But now there is elation, and their butts are still alive. Very much so. 7-1 to one, Pittsburgh. Bird fly living, going to work in the ninth inning on Murray, Renicky, and Desensei. The Orioles scored first in the fifth inning, but the Pirates with two in the sixth, two more in the seventh, three in the eighth, 7-1 Pittsburgh. Eddie Murray, 0 for 3. In the bullpen, just in case. Hit the Kobe, the right-hander, and Grant Jackson, the left-hander. Give a lot of credit today to Jim Rooker. Rooker working the first five as the surprise starter. Gave up just one run. And then Blylevin out of the bullpen. He's allowed only one hit and no runs through three. Murray hits a fly ball to left center field. Omar Moreno is waving Robinson away. One out. And he was right to wave Robinson away in a situation like that. The center fielder captains the outfield. The point Don Drysdale has often made. Well, that's true, Howard. A center fielder, let him, he's the captain out there. He's going to take anything with, that he can get. And that is to his right or to his left. And when you've got a guy like Moreno out there that can go get him the way he can, why it makes it a lot easier job on Parker and Robinson. Gary Renicky, one for three. Oh, and one. Al, I'd just like to comment, too, on what you said about Jim Rooker. You couldn't ask for a man to give you any more at a better time. Rooker today retired the first ten men he faced. Did not allow a hit until the fifth inning. Just what the Pirates needed from their starter. Popped up in a shallow left field. In Foley, two down. So we are on the verge of going back to the city by the bay, the other bay, the Chesapeake Bay. <laughs> and don't forget tonight, a special Sunday night edition of NFL football with the Dallas Cowboys and their great weapons against the Rams and their great defense. And tomorrow night, the Minnesota Vikings. Holy Foley is what the sign says. Tomorrow night, the Vikes being held together by the wizardry of Bud Grant against the Jets. On average, going into today's games, the best running team in the NFL. Doug DeSensei hits a deep foot foul down the left field line and out of play. He got all of that, just hooked it. That had plenty of home run depth. Oh, look at that. What a shot. Billy Sullivan, our cameraman up there taking these shots all day long from our helicopter. Boy, that's beautiful, isn't it? Oh, and two. So they're one strike away from celebrating in Pittsburgh. I think, and rightfully so. You know, the fans have saw, they've seen two losses over here. They've had a great year. They go out with a win. And Earl Weaver sitting there as well. Why do we get you in Baltimore, pal? <laughs> uh, I'll tell you this. Yes, you're right about Jim Rooker. But this man, Bert Glylevin, has become the compelling pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. His yeah, excellent effort in the second game, and now this, his first relief effort since 1972. This is the man they used to say couldn't win the big one. Well, I think you can erase that right now. He could not have pitched any better than he did in game three of the playoffs against Cincinnati. And a relief roll today. Magnificent. The one-two pitch. Fouled away. That is such a phony statement. I've never understood how anyone could make a statement like that. How you cannot win the big one. First of all, Bly Levin's never been on a winner until this year. That's right. Here's where all the big stuff is in the playoffs in the World Series. Or the other fallacy. Stay close and you'll beat him. <laughs> The one-two to the sensei is hitting the left field, and Robinson coming on has to short hop it. So the Orioles stay alive barely on a single to left by the sensei, and John Lowenstein will come up to pinch it for Dower.
John Lowenstein to deliver the two-run pinch double yesterday. tell you something about that man, Bly Levin. Again, to show you the nature and character of the people on these two teams. For the second year in a row, Bert and his wife, Patty, gave the Pirates a $1,000 check each month of the baseball season to buy tickets. Lowenstein hits it into right field, and Parker is able to keep it from going to the wall and get it back in. And Lowenstein is suddenly come hot. And his running tickets mate. for others to attend the Bucks game. Really a remarkable thing. He's trying to close him out here as Terry Crowley, who delivered the other two-run double yesterday, comes up to pinch hit for Dempsey. And as Crowley can keep it alive, we'll see yet another pinch hitter with Stanhouse due up next, and Lee May has come out of the dugout. Once the last time you saw a seven-run rally with two out in the ninth inning to overcome a six to seven to one lead. Well, it would certainly foul up my dinner plan. <laughs> <laughs> a strike, all one. This will not, no gift could leave in Chuck Tanner's bereavement today, but. Bouncing ball is fouled, fouled at the plate off his foot. But as much as one could do for that man has been done by his players today. He's quite a guy. Probably the toughest thing he's ever had to do in his life today. Absolutely. Oh, of course. Crowley with a new bat, the count, no balls and two strikes. Again, Blind Levin within one strike of closing out the Orioles in game number five. <laughs> I love him. Sensation. Oh, two fish. Is hit in the air to left field. This should do it. Robinson says, I'll take care of it. And they go back to Baltimore. The sign reads, there was no doubt about it. And Timmy Foley will remember this day. But that man made the above all. And Bert Lyle left. There's Timmy. And the signs again come into evidence. The fireworks go off. The Bucks are still alive. There have been a lot of great World Series. The one between the Reds and the Red Sox, memorable. Pods and Tigers. But I think they're going to remember this one too.